The Demon Energy D1NZ, brought to you by TBC Performance Wheels, The Rock FM, Link ECU, High Tech Oils and Club Auto Insurance. Welcome to the Demon Energy D1NZ National Drifting Championship Series. Yes, it's an action-packed show this week. Round one of the 2016 season at Manfield Raceway in Fielding. Let's check out what's coming up on today's show. Coming up, I chat to the drivers in pit lane. We go on board for a sideways lap around Manfield thanks to GoPro. We check out the front runners in qualifying and then it's battle time. Action from round one of the Pro Championship. But first, it's time to go behind the scenes with the drivers in the Link ECU pit walk. Now, I noticed you started all of yesterday without your front uh, bumper and then without the rear bumper and then you took off the side skirts. Well, just didn't want to do any damage because it's custom. It's a good looking car, it looks a lot better than the one you finished Mount Smart last season with. Yeah, that one, that had a bit of panel damage, so we had to, we had to change it around a wee bit. Are you enjoying the round one of the Demon Energy D1NZ National Drifting Championship? I am enjoying it, but I've had a few issues with my car. So uh, we've sorted that now. Look, thank you very much, Filthy Phil Sutherland. Here's my mate, Bruce Tannock. Don't panic, Bruce. We so I did it. I had to. Lie. How are you? I'm very well, mate. The uh, the car looks sensational this season. Yeah, I'm very pleased with the results, and all the guys helped us rebuild it in the off season, and now it looks top notch. It certainly does. I mean, we've been talking about it all weekend, and uh, you've got to be excited. You're looking fast out there. <laughs> um, yeah, car's really hooking up. Um, the power delivery from the new turbo is unreal, basically. Like it's everything I've ever wanted. Uh, so now, all wet all morning in practice, so now we're going out in the drive for the first time, we get one lap to side it, so hopefully it all goes well. You're supposed to be leaning on your cover, no, stay there, you know. I mean, do you do some work on it? Is that why you're allowed to lean on it? Oh, this will be the backup car if anything goes wrong. <laughs> so it's quite a common thing to have the old backup and then uh, do things like that, isn't it? Yeah, well, most of us are all friends around here, so everyone's there to help. If anyone needs a car and you're not using it, then it's always good to, to oh. um, offer it up. What's the difference between Australia and New Zealand for drifting? A um, bit of style. Uh, it's judged a little bit differently. It takes a bit to adapt, but uh, we keep coming back, obviously. So it is really good. One thing I love about Michael Prosnick is big smoke. Yeah, just hold it flat, limbs, fry heaps of tyres. That's it. Your car, what's happened with that? Um, it is awesome. It's been, uh, obviously we've done the engine transplant, we've gone to the uh, RB30 uh, after the NASCAR ended up running a bearing and uh, just was too costly for our kind of budget to, to bring it back together. So um, we've gone back to the heart that what we've started with and what we know and very happy the car's in one piece. Hey look, I could ask, I mean, what was, what was the talk yesterday afternoon when you started, you went to out qualifying here to throw everything you could just to get your Y1 position? Yeah, I'll get him one day. <laughs> You'll get him one day. Look, while we're talking about getting people, Donnie D, mate. What's hey. happening, dude? Oh, I don't know, dude. We're into round one. It's the season's on. It's been a busy off season, so um, yeah, we're just we're just here doing what we can, and Jody's doing awesome, which is which is great. And yeah. Shane Al, how are you, mate? Yeah, good. Look, um, can I pinch one of these? Oh, sure. I'll just chuck that on the wrist. So, look, um. You were hoping for wet conditions because you're a bit of a wet condition maestro. Yeah, well, they all come from uh, Speedway, you know, sometimes it can be pretty slippery there, so if it rains, it rains, if it's not, well, oh well. On fire, number one qualifier yesterday. Yeah, man, ah, no, the car's feeling good and, uh, you know, we changed the setup this morning to the wet and it was feeling just as good, so, no, it was quick airs in the, you know, in the wet as well, so it looks like it's drying up though, so we'll be back to smoky and, uh, Hopefully, uh, doing what needs to be done. Good to meet you. How's your day going, yeah, bud? All good. Uh, having a chasing a few problems out there, but hopefully we get back on top of it before the battles. So what else is happening with the car, man? It looks stunning. Yeah, car's looking great. Just um, replaced everything in the car, but the steering rack, and that's the thing that decided to let go. I'll uh, bring on those battles. Bring on the battles. All right, guys. So we're going to head upstairs, and uh, we'll see you soon. Well, as you just saw in Steve's pit walk, our top qualifier for the weekend went to former champ Kurt Whitaker, and now we ride on board with the man himself for a lap around Manfield Raceway. The drivers love this section, fast flowing, lots of camber and five clipping points for the drivers to navigate. 
Coming up into sector one here, giving chase to Drew Donovan out in front. Now here is the first clipping zone on the right-hand side of the screen. Both front and rear of the car need to hit that zone to score maximum points. There's the next clipping point, that left-hand ripple strip. They switch on through to the right-hand. There's another zone. They need to run the front of the car as close as possible. And then here's an aggressive section coming through here. Transition through to a late inside apex. Those two cones that just went past on the left-hand side of the screen. It's a really quick, fast-flowing lap around here. About 130 to 160 kilometers an hour sideways. A lot of precision required in the driver's seat. That was a GoPro track rundown, but looking at the top qualifiers from round one now, and Brad Smith put the BSR 350Z into 10th place. Nico Reed's Evergreen Tyres, S15 slotting into 9th. Team DSR's Dave Steedman stepping into his teammate's car, the Mimico 180SX into 8th place. The CMP Construction S15 of Gaz Grove taking 7th. Cole Armstrong in the V Energy 250 GT Skyline took sixth place for the RBs. Team DMNZ's Jody Verholst getting fifth place in the GT86 Supra. Teammate and partner Drew Donovan taking out fourth place. A great result for the Milwaukee Tools team. The screaming RB30 of defending champion Darren Kelly in the high-tech oil skyline, the best of the turbo pilots in third position. The top qualifying spot would be a battle of V8's former champ Dan Woolhouse putting his new supercharger through its paces for second place. But as mentioned earlier, it was none other than Mr. Perfect, former champ Kurt Whitaker in the Auto Short R34 Skyline, putting the Ford V8 Power into pole position. So Kurt Whitaker draws first blood for round one of the season. Ford versus Holden, the V8's at the top for qualifying, but Darren Kelly's turbo Nissan right behind. Don't go away after the break. It's battle time. Highlights from the top 32. Welcome back. You're watching the Demon Energy D1NZ Drifting Championship Round 1 from Manfield Raceway. Yes, it's highlights from the top 32. Tom Marshall in the Evergreen Tires S15 taking victory over Stewie Baker in his S13. This put him through against Drew Donovan in the Milwaukee Tools S15, but it would be mechanical dramas for Marshall. Donovan grabbing the win into the top eight. Dane and Templeman in the new 2JZ E46 BMW took victory over Troy Jenkins in the Brian Roberts towing Nissan Silvia. This put him through to the battle with pole sitter Kurt Whitaker, pushing him into an OMT but making a big mistake, sparing him off track, sending Whitaker through to the top eight. Dave Steedman in his teammate's car, the Mimico 180SX battling Nico Reed in the Evergreen Tires S15. Steedman holding the advantage from his lead run to take the win into the top eight. Rattler Motorsport Shane Allen and the Gulf Western Oils Ford Falcon put on a commanding lead run against local favourite Jaron Olive Croner. This put Rattler through to the battle with Jody Verholst in the top 16. Shane Allen again taking victory into the top eight. Australian international Michael Prosnick took his first battle at Manfield, but it was Christchurch hero Filthy Phil Sutherland moving through to the top 16. This saw the 2JZ R34 Skyline up against Fangadan Century Batteries Holden Commodore, the V8 moving through to the Great A. It was a scrappy run with Ben Wilkinson stepping into an unfamiliar car, borrowing Chin Jin's Pro Sport S14. Brad Smith taking a win in the BSR 350Z. This saw Brad in the supercharged VQ38 up against the LS V8 power of Gaz Grove in the CMP construction S15. Gaz Grove taking an easy victory. And it was double duties for the Mimico 180SX. This time regular pilot Adam Davies behind the wheel. Bruce Tannock's Achilles Radial S13 was the strong contender taking a win for the RB30s. This saw him battle current series defending champion Darren Kelly in the High Tech Oils R34 Skyline. Kelly holding on to the advantage to take the win into the top eight. 
the final battle of the top 32 saw Team 80 J's Joe Marshall fending off Dylan Woolhouse in the C35 Laurel. Marshall peddling the RB powered 180SX into the top 16, but it was another Nissan taking the honours. Cole Armstrong's V Energy Skyline putting on a strong chase to take the win into the top eight. So there's how the top 32 and the top 16 played out, setting us up for the top eight battle tree. Whitaker and Steedman battle on the left, followed by Donovan and Allen. On the other side, it's Woolhouse versus Grove and Kelly versus Armstrong. All right, it's top eight time here. Round one of the Demon Energy D1NZ Championship Series, the opening round of the season. And here we've got a pair of V8s battling on screen. Vanger Dan Woolhouse in the Century Batteries. VE Holden Commodore, 860 horsepower. But he's also being hunted down by an LS V8 of the CMP Construction S15. Gaz Grove doing a great job holding on to the two times champion of Fanger Dan, getting caught in a smoke screen as they finish that sector. Not a bad lap there from Gaz Grove. Now it's his turn in the lead. Now Gaz Grove pushed Fanger Dan into an OMT, and this is the final lap. And Gaz Grove contact with Fanger Dan. Fanger Dan really trying to close that proximity, but at all cost, Gaz Grove a bumper as they came through that section. And look at Fanger Dan. He's battling here, trying to regain control of the Commodore back online where he wants it after that contact. So it really put him off, but Fanger will hold the advantage with that points from the first lap, and he'll go through to take the win. The bumper goes flying in the high tech oils replay. You see Fanger Dan on the tail end of the car up in front, Gas Grove. He's hammering the gas, Fanger all over him. Yeah, that's a win for Fanger Dan. Next up, though, it's a battle of the RVs. Cole Armstrong and Darren Kelly, straight six turbocharged Nissans, and Darren Kelly leading out in the high tech oils R34 Skyline, defending champion, trying to fend off the hard charging Cole Armstrong. Of course, Cole Armstrong's got a few more years of experience up his sleeve in that V Energy 250 GT, and it all goes wrong for Darren Kelly here, and that is drama for his championship title defense, and that would be a 10 0 advantage to Cole Armstrong. Big issues for the R34 skyline of Darren Kelly. As we watch the high-tech oils replay, you watch, there it goes, the breakage in the front right-hand corner. That's going to cost Darren not a great start for his title defence. Yeah, on board here with the breakage on board that high-tech oils R34. And, of course, uh, that put him on the flatbed. It is done and dusted for the top eight for Darren Kelly. So it's Kurt Whitaker, the two times champion, to lead Dave Steadman driving the 180SX Mimico car. Steadman going off track. That's going to be a 10 0. Yeah, Steadman just pushing wide there. Kurt Whitaker out in front, our pole sitter in the AutoShore R34. Here's the high tech replay, and uh, this is where it all goes wrong. It's pretty hard to be stepping into an unfamiliar car there for Dave Steadman and his teammates' car, unfortunately borrowing a car after blowing his engine uh, in the Trans-Tasman Drifting Championship over in Sydney. We'll touch on more on that later, but here's a chance now for Dave Steedman to repair the points loss in that first pass. He's trying to put on a, a hell of a lead here. In fact, he's really mashing the throttle, putting down the smoke. Kurt Whitaker's dropping back, but I tell you what, that'll be a pretty big advantage to Kurt Whitaker, especially with that wheel off track on that last apex, and Kurt Whitaker will happily take the win there. Drew Donovan in the Milwaukee Tills S15 leading the way in the Gulf Western Oils Rattler Falcon of Shane Allen. Yeah, a little bit of a twitchy chase coming through that sweeper there for Shane Allen. It's a big car to try and muscle around, but I tell you what, look at that proximity. He's really trying to close the gap on Drew Donovan out in front. It's all about emulating the lead car, matching what they do out in front and matching or improving what the lead car can do on the clipping points. But unfortunately for Shane, completely missed that last apex and Drew Donovan looking pretty strong there. Shane Allen going way too too wide, costing him the battle. Next pass now, Gulf Western Oils, Ford Falcon out in front, Milwaukee Tills in the rear, the S15 V8 up against the Ford V8 out in front. Of course, it's Chevy versus Ford. Shane Allen trying to claw back some points here after missing that apex. And I tell you what, Donnie D in the rear, just closing in on that proximity. He's really trying to get up on that rear quarter. But I tell you what, here we go. Shane Allen's just not quite on that late apex again. And Donnie D will capitalize. Drew Donovan into the top four. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back.
Welcome back to the Demon Energy D1NZ Drifting Championship Series. It's round one from Manfield Raceway, and we are now into the top four semi-final time. On the left-hand side of the tree, we see Kurt Whitaker facing Drew Donovan. On the right-hand side, it's Dan Woolhouse and Cole Armstrong, V8 versus Turbo. And out first, we see the R34 Autoshaw skyline of Kurt Whitaker leading Donnie D in the Milwaukee Tools S15. Whitaker, snap transition into that centre section of the course. Yeah, that's the line that the judges want to see, and Kurt Whitaker really just hammering it home out in front. Look at the smoke. Donnie D is just chewing on it. That Ford 410 V8 power out in front, shredding the tyres. And unfortunately for Donnie D, a big mistake there on that last sector. You'd have to say big advantage right now to Kurt Whitaker. High Tech Oils replay, and you can see exactly what Donovan had to deal with. The massive amounts of smoke coming out the back of that Nissan Skyline. Here we go, on board with Kurt Whitaker and Donnie D as well. At the ready, it's a rolling start. Manfield Raceway semi-final time. Second pass now for Donovan. He's got something to prove out in front to try claim back some points here. But Kurt Whitaker really trying to stack on the angle and come on through. Donnie D washing out a little bit wide. Kurt Whitaker just capitalising right now. And I tell you what, he's got to be a shoe in for the final spot. Whitaker, as you see, the big rolling burnout to finish. He'll take it through, going into the final. Well, we talk about V8 Invasion, and it's Chevrolet versus Ford on track right now, despite being both Nissan chassis, and Kurt Whitaker really just cleaning up here on this apex, and uh, fantastic setup there from the Autoshaw R34. Semi-final number two is Fanger Dan Woolhouse in the Century Batteries VE Commodore. It's a battle of the big four doors, Cole Armstrong in the V Energy 250 GT Skyline, giving chase to Fanger Dan out in front. V8 versus Turbo, of course, Cole Armstrong moving to that straight six turbo this season after running that Dodge NASCAR, but unfortunately pushing wide there through that first sector, and now he tries to reclaim some points back through this last sector here, but Fanger Dan just out in front with a bit of a proximity buffer to Armstrong. The right-hand side of Cole Armstrong's 250 GT pushing wide. Yeah, Cole Armstrong pushing really wide off that midline that we wanted to see out on the ripple strip, and that just set him up bad for the rest of the run. Fanger Dan out in front holding the advantage. Second pass, it's Nissan versus Holden. The V Energy 250 GT of Cole Armstrong leading the VE Holden Commodore of Fanger Dan Wilhouse, the Century Batteries Commodore. Fantastic onboard shot as we come through the second clipping point. Yeah, Fanger Dan comes on through the switch here, really wants to stick to that proximity. He's got a bit of an advantage from that first lap. And look at this, closes the gap right up on this last apex. Cole Armstrong really trying to fend off that big Commodore, but Fanger Dan holding the advantage, and he'll grab a ticket to the final. And this sets us up for the final battle. Kurt Whitaker will go up against Daniel Woolhouse, but first, it's the battle for third place between Drew Donovan and Cole Armstrong. Drew Donovan out in front, the Milwaukee Tools, Nissan S15, Chevrolet LS V8 in the bonnet, and he's being hunted down by the straight six turbo of the RB30, Nissan of Cole Armstrong. On board here with Drew Donovan, looking back at Armstrong, really trying to stick to that rear quarter. That's what it's all about, emulating what happens out in front matching or improving the clipping point layout too. And Donnie D misses that late apex, that ripple strip. You just see that Colt Armstrong closing up and he'll take a very strong advantage in the first pass. So it's the battle of the two Tauranga drivers as they go into the second pass. Armstrong in the V Energy 250 GT leading the way with Drew Donovan tucking up underneath him. Yeah, Drew Donovan's trying to return the favour to Armstrong with a good chase. Armstrong just pushing a lever so slightly wide there, and that really just hands a bit more proximity here to Donovan, who's going to try and clean him up through this last apex. They're both on it, but I tell you what, Armstrong will hold the biggest point advantage out of the first pass, and he will take third place here at Manfield. But it's final time for the Demon Energy D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Kurt Whitaker in the Autoshaw R34 Skyline. It's a battle Ford versus Holden in the final. Yeah, that's right, the Ford 410 V8 Skyline out in front. Fanger Dan really stacking on something there on that rear quarter for Kurt Whitaker. Now, these two have got plenty of history here at Manfield. They've battled here before in the final, and uh, it didn't go in favour for Fanger Dan, but look at Fanger Dan really trying to rectify that here this time round on the 2016 season. As we take a look at the replay, this is Fanger Dan coming right up on that rear quarter. In fact, there might even be just a little bit of contact there, but it didn't upset the lead car, and really, just a fantastic chase from the Century Batteries Commodore.
So it's going to be the second pass that's going to decide who our champion is for round number one here at Manfield. We're on board with Kurt Whitaker. Fanger Dan now has a chance to lead. Our pulse sitter in the chase. What can Kurt Whitaker do? A little bit of a wobble as they come through this last sector. Fanger Dan stacking on the angle yet again. He pushes a little wide though. Kurt Whitaker tries to regain that proximity, but it just doesn't stick. Fanger Dan out in front. 860 horsepower. A brand new Vortex supercharger and Fanger Dan making an impressive start to the season. High-tech oil replay. We watch Fanger Dan lead, and it almost looks like the right front wheel of Kurt Whitaker might have gone off onto the grass. Yeah, we ride on board with Kurt Whitaker, former champ himself, and there it is, the onboard, and the judges would have seen that from the tower. That looked like a wheel off. Big points deduction. There's another angle from the high shot, and I tell you what, that's a pretty hard decision to make. But there's our podium finishes for round number one of the Demon Energy D1NZ Drifting Championship. Fanger Dan Woolhouse finally grabs his first ever win at Manfield Raceway, despite more than 12 years of drifting under his belt. Another former champ, Kurt Whitaker, takes second from Colt Armstrong in third, and that's how the championship points line up after round one. First blood to the V8. The Auto Shore R34 Skyline, second place this weekend. Oh, me, eh? And, uh, you know, this thing's just been going magic all weekend. The boys spent a lot of time in the off-season just... Just, just making it right, you know. We know what works. We know that it's um, got the goods, and and it proved it. Like I say, it's been from day one, pretty much coming to this track, a whole lot of seconds, and we had a good run against Kurt here about three years ago. And when we met again, it was like it's on, you know. Like we've we've got we've come here to do a job, and and yeah, just just drove the car as hard as I could. Yeah, just I'm just blown away, mate. This is awesome. Great stuff from our podium finishes. It's skid time, victory burnouts, round one done and dusted and fielding. And congratulations to Fanger Dan Woolhouse in the V8 during first blood in round one. Yeah, that's right, Steve. The V8's topping round one at Manfield Raceway. Tune in next week, though. Can the turbo strike back? It's ASB Bay Park, the concrete jungle in Tauranga. Thanks, Kenny. We're also looking forward to the New Zealand leg of the first ever High Tech Oils Trans Tasman Drifting Series. Make sure you come and support the Kiwis take on the best of Australia as we enjoy round five of the Demon Energy D1NZ Pro Series in Christchurch. Mark your calendars, get your tickets for Easter weekend and tune in next week. It's round two of the season in Tauranga. Special guest, American Formula D Pro Driver Ryan Turk. The Demon Energy D1NZ brought to you by TVC Performance Wheels, The Rock FM, Link ECU, High Tech Oils and Club Auto Insurance.